topic or the uh, the ten types of ghosts. And um, ooh, I'm scared already. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, it wasn't until I started doing my research, Joe, as you know, that I realized how broad the definition of the word ghost really is. Um, I mean, in recent years, my ghost lectures have focused on various types of ghosts, why they come to so-called haunt, and, you know, I've given examples in the book of these local places and who haunts and why. And because uh, a lot of people think that, you know, a ghost is, you know, with the ball and chain and there's an apparition of a figure in a white dress, and sometimes that's true, and that they, you know, haunt the place because they died here tragically and they're stuck here. But you and I both know uh, from doing our own investigations and the research that it goes beyond that. So I first learned about these ten types of ghosts from a book entitled Ghosts and How to See Them. It came out in 1993 and it was written by one of the most experienced ghost hunters in the world. His name is Peter Underwood, and he's from London. Now, Peter was, and he still may be, the president of the Ghost Club, which was founded in 1862. It's the oldest and most respected British investigating organization in London. Now, Underwood's book is a thorough guide to understanding ghosts and how to investigate them, so I I do really recommend getting a copy if you can find one. Um, It's a must-have for any ghost hunter or anyone else who is interested in the topic. And throughout writing my own books, you know, I really use that as a guide, as a handbook. So uh, the ten different types of ghosts that we'll be discussing tonight are actually from Underwood's book, and I hope that it gives all of you a better understanding of how and why uh, ghosts may exist. I want to clarify the definition of ghosts versus spirits because we do, you know, our yes, yes, show is about spirits and ghosts. Um, personally, and I, I carry and tell me if you have a different view of this. I think we're pretty much on the same page. But to me, a ghost is an apparition. It's what we're going to talk about tonight. It's sort of a a replay of an event or something that happened a long time ago because of an imprint or place memory. Mm. Um, A spirit is more of an interactive being, basically a person has passed on. So when you hear us talking about ghosts, some of these things tonight, these categories, actually could also be spiritually related. In other Mm. words, the best analogy is if you knock on the door of a haunted house and somebody knocks back and there's no one there, that's Mm. probably spirit. But if you go to the haunted house and every anniversary at midnight, uh, every year at, say, the the stroke of midnight, you see this specter appear in the front hall and then it disappears. And you can can say hello, you can wave your arms wildly and say, who are you? And this thing just does its thing and disappears every time the same, recurring every time the same way. That's 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 more of a ghost. And that's actually one of our types of ghosts, which we'll be getting to. Yes, it is. That's right. Now, um, you want to talk about uh, the first category. Yeah, because that's usually one of the most popular ones and one of the more well-known ones would be historical ghosts. Now, these are ghostly figures that supposedly haunt old houses or places, especially those with strong historical backgrounds, which is something that Joe and I specialize in because we Mm -hmm. love history. So most historical ghosts, they're also called traditional ghosts, and they appear as an apparition and may appear to be solid. They are dressed in period clothing. They rarely speak. They actually never speak, and they rarely show any sign of being aware of the presence of human beings. But in many cases, these ghosts may have suffered in some way during their earthly life, or they just may have an attachment to the place in which they haunt. So this would make them place-centered, which means that they are confined to old properties or ruins. Um, Apparitions of historical ghosts may go on for centuries. That's how long they can stick around. Yes, and you know, Carrie Ann, um, when I was younger, uh, one of my favorite Book authors to read was uh, Hans Holzer, and I right, think yes, he wrote. Right, I have several. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think he he wrote over a hundred books, maybe more, maybe a couple yeah, hundred. I don't know, but great. I know. Uh, yeah, and um, uh, his uh, daughter is in is in our uh, network. She's uh, she really? posts, she yeah she keeps her keeps his work going, and uh, she's in our Facebook uh, network. And um, I'm very honored to have her in the group. She's 
a dynamic person too. I've never got to talk to her personally, but mm -hmm. she's doing all kind of video films. Uh, it's great. To, yeah. So anyway, um, when I was younger, I used to read Hans Holzer, and one of the things. I remember we used to read about these abbeys, the monks, and the dark nights, and all these different stories that go back, you know, 400, 600 years. And those are kind of what I think of when I think of a historical ghost. It's a ghost maybe of the Revolutionary War or the, the you know, the night the, from the Round Table. That kind of image that you would see that would just keep recurring over centuries. Number two, we have what they call atmospheric photographic ghosts, which these type of ghosts are also called mental image ghosts. And the events can imprint themselves in the atmosphere of a place. Uh, so it's, sort of, um, it's sort of like getting a suntan, where the sun bakes into your skin and turns it a golden brown color, you know? And yeah. well, the, the environment picks up emotional energy, so it can get imprints from events that have occurred. Now, what's interesting is these ghosts are only visible from a certain viewpoint, and they're always doing the same thing. So they actually are photographic recordings of past events. It's sort of like watching an old film strip playing, and often they are accompanied by sound. So sometimes through the passing of years, the image fades away and the sound remains. Eventually, like a battery running out, the sound too will disappear. Next one that we have listed is the cyclic or recurring ghosts, which is what you were talking about. Now, um, these are ghosts who were humans and who a lot of times hey, suffered you, a traumatic. Gary, could you say that? Could you say that again? What's it called? It's the recurring ghosts or cyclic. No, what was the word before? Ghosts. Cyclic. Cyclic. Yeah. Is so these right. ghosts on bicycles or? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sorry, I had to do. I couldn't resist that. <laughs> Thank you for the joke, Joe. Yes, yes, they're bicycle riding folks. We need to get hey, that. I have to, I'm listen, just I'm reading no, no what kidding. they said in his list. That's how I know. No, listen, I have. I'm not kidding you. I have a true story, Cape Cod. I have. I saw a cyclic recurring ghost, which was actually a guy on a bicycle ride. If you want me to tell you that story, it's a true story. <laughs> I witnessed it. It's an apparition. There you go. It was a guy that used to run. That. Yeah, well, this is all i got to save a few things for the show. <laughs> no. um, I was in Cape Cod a few years ago, and as I'm, I wasn't driving. I was a passenger, and uh, my mom and I were going along uh, Route 1, uh, Route 6, I'm mm -hmm. oh, sorry, Route 6, and we got into one town there, I think the town of Dennis or something, and it was a beautiful day, but it was kind of getting towards sunset. And on the left, there was a white picket fence. They had these beautiful homes up there that go back to the 1600s. Right. And I saw this man on a bicycle, it's transparent. He's riding very quickly, almost like just a wispy thing, along the picket fence as the sunset's hitting the fence. It's creating this image of this man riding a bicycle. Right. And he was dressed the way he looked. He was like, like you'd think of Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry Finn. It was that kind of dress. Right. And he went around the corner, made a quick turn down a side street, and just vanished. So wow. that to me, Very it was a recurring because, yeah, it was probably somebody that went on that route every day, maybe to a one, a one room schoolhouse or whatever they would do. Maybe went to work, and it imprinted on that street. Right. And so it just was. It was so. I don't know if it's an atmospheric, maybe, or it's a recurring. Yeah, that, that's interesting, but, though. Well, how how I recall it with the recurring mm -hmm. ghosts is a lot of times these are people that suffered some kind of traumatic occurrence while on the earth, and like you mentioned earlier, they can appear in regular cycles, usually annually, to when the event took mm -hmm. place. So there are many reports of these cyclic ghosts, but most are not well authenticated. Um, the presence of certain people being there, as well as the climate conditions, the atmospheric pressure and alterations, and the magnetic field also can play a part in uh, some of these periodic manifestations. But, um, you know, it's, it's a little bit difficult, uh, you know, to explain at times. But one good example, uh, this is actually a very good one. Every February, um, apparently, 
the ghost of Abraham Lincoln's uh, his funeral train is seen going throughout the certain states of our country where oh, that's it's really cool. carried. Yeah, and I did a whole blog. This is one of my favorite blogs um, back in this past February. And again, you can get to that through my website. And I do a whole story on um, Abraham Lincoln because he haunts so many different places. But uh, specifically, his funeral train um, is seen on the same day and time of when it, it, it did it. Um, through that funeral run, and uh, so that's a perfect example. We really didn't um, come across that much in ghosts in either of the ghost books, but um, the Abraham Lincoln train is really a good definition to describe it. So for category four, it's a family ghost. Now that usually, um, that's something that a lot of people can experience um, in modern day. It's the appearance of a former family member or a ghost that attaches itself to a certain family for one reason or another. Now sometimes in this case, um, its function is to warn the family of an impending disaster or even a family Mm -hmm. death. Um, In some cases, the manifestation is non-human, and in other cases, the former family member can make himself known through the manipulation of physical objects rather than actually showing themselves. So examples of this, and a lot of people report this to us when we give lectures, a picture falling off a wall, a candle relighting itself, radios and lights turning on or off. So you don't actually see the person, but you know that it's a family member. to another category because a lot of times when things start to happen with objects and and everything, that can also go into a poltergeist category. And uh, that's something that Joe and I tend to try to stay away from, uh, that type of ghost, because it can be dangerous or evil, and we we try to stay away from things like that. Now, poltergeist is the most uh, unpleasant of all the types of ghosts mentioned here. Some researchers believe that these ghosts are malevolent entities who take pleasure in persecuting and frightening innocent people. So this is the type of thing that you see in Paranormal Activity and all these different shows. It's not as common as people would think. Hollywood likes to make it like it's a common occurrence, but it really is not as common as you think. Um, but some people believe that these disturbances can be caused um, by this type of ghost as far as you know, the movement of objects, fire or water appearing out of nowhere, that they may be elementals, which are underdeveloped or imperfect spirits who like to play practical jokes and tricks on people. And in those cases, they'll do things such as moving things around, throwing things, overturning objects and spilling items. Now, others believe that these ghosts perform this phenomenon out of exasperation or desperation to communicate with humans. Leading into that, um, I mean, the modern ghosts can fall into that because those are ghosts of the more recently dead. They're not people from Mm -hmm. our history. Uh, These are people that are, and and also we're more likely to see this type of ghost of a recently dead person than any other type of ghost. Um, Although most people will not realize it's a ghost until it has disappeared. You know, with these modern ghosts, you do tend to see, it, uh, you know, an apparition, but they look so real that you don't know they're an apparition. And there is so much evidence uh, for people seeing modern ghosts in familiar surroundings. It was um, the story of a man who was out working in his front yard, and every day he'd see his neighbor walking his dog, and to this day was no exception. And he said hello to the man, but this time the man didn't answer. He just, like, kept walking, and uh, he was talking to his wife. He said, by the way, I saw so-and-so, and and the wife's face just, I mean, this is, you know, turned ghostly white, we could say. She said, I was going to tell you tonight that our neighbor, he, he passed away a day ago. Again, is it an imprint? Is it, you know, what's happening there? And there are a lot of examples of that, and people don't know that it's it's a ghost, you know. Another category is the crisis apparition. And um, you talk about, you know, these ghosts, too, of the recently dead, and they appear for, it's, it's similar, they appear for a limited time, usually no more than four, 
four days and that is often the spirit of a loved one that's coming to say goodbye and there are thousands of examples of this reported during both world wars it's the most common and spontaneous um, manifestation so you you have a story regarding that um, with a world war two vet joe that's right my actually my dad had seen his father appear at his bed my dad what happened was um my dad was injured in the war he, he world war two he was a vet he was down by mm-hmm. i think the battle of the bulge and mm-hmm. He had some surgery. He needed back surgery and neck surgery because he had gotten hit by a mortar shell. So, you know, and mm-hmm. his foxhole did anyway, not directly, but, you know, it bounced him around and injured his back. So he was in surgery to correct some of these back problems. And while he was in surgery, um, he saw his father visit him. Wow. And his father was in this big sunlit room with all these big windows, and he was wearing his his hat. It's like derby hat from the, the period that they wore hats. Mm. And, um, but he saw his father, my mm. grandfather. And short time after, everybody comes into the room wearing these black, uh, you know, black suits. Then they just come from the funeral and they hadn't told my father his dad had passed on. So they came in and said, we have something to tell you. And he says, my dad died, right? He says, I saw him. That's what he and they said. Like, How did you know? Yeah, but he, it wasn't even, it was like an enlightening thing for my yeah. father to see his father. His father right. basically visited him one last time. So that's a real, that was a great uh, yeah, short they Yeah, those are very emotional stories. This this category of ghosts is very filled with emotion because there are so many examples of mothers who have ch- sons that are in the war and or wives that have husbands and they know when the husbands or or the child has has passed away in during wartime and that type of thing because they get a vision they because it's their loved one coming to say goodbye and then the next day they get a phone call or someone shows up at the door and says you know they've passed on and and they already know they already know that because it it's Unlike a dream, it's, it's extremely real to them, and um, it's just a gut feeling, and they, and they know that that person has passed on. Well, as Category 9 which um, we had our whole show devoted to, was the ghost of inanimate objects. Um, right, that which, was I, which I call... Show, which you specialize, yeah. Yeah, I, I call them haunted objects. Um, everybody always thinks of the, the Chucky doll, which is a very negative Hollywood stereotype of a haunted object. But uh, these things can be any kind of object. It can be a clock, uh, a chair, a doll, car, airplanes, rocking chairs... Um, trains. Um, when I was in, um, I think it was in Santa Maria's last year, I got to go to a private home that is like, I don't know, it's like 200 or 300, maybe 300 years old. It's a really old house, and this lady lives there. She's just a fabulous woman. And she had lost a husband who was a, a, into clocks, and they mm-hmm. had a big grandfather clock that was there. Oh, and they told um, me about this. Yeah, and uh, this thing hadn't chimed in years, and we were talking about the husband who passed on, and um, I didn't know anything about him, and then suddenly this grandfather clock was, like, right near me, and some right. chimes, and yeah. it just caught, caught everybody by surprise, and then she told me that he was really into beautiful antique clocks and grandfather right. clocks and watches and things. So that's, that's a perfect so, example of that. I do want to get in that last category before we're off the air. Um, our animal ghosts, and this is something that we will devote in the future a whole show on to. But it's a very t- common type of ghost. Um, our loyal pets have been known to come back to um, their owners to comfort them, or in some cases even to save their lives. They usually come back to the place in which they live to visit and to comfort us. But that wraps up our ten types of ghosts, right? Because a real yes, I'll tell you, there's a lot there. The time is <laughs> wow, just blown by time. 
Yeah. That's right. So what would you say um, if people want to check out more about ghosts and about the work we do, and where can they go, Carrie Ann? They can go to the website, www.ghostoflongisland.com, and then we have uh, Joe's website, joegpi.com, and you can join our Facebook by checking, uh, searching Joe G. Quinto and Carrie Ann flanagan Broski. And uh, we encourage you to become, you know, fans of our Facebook and blogs. And uh, you can get the books on Amazon, and it really goes into these different types of ghosts. I mean, we could only fit so much into an hour. So, uh, But I hope everyone got the sense of what, um, you know, what this is about. And you can uh, listen to all of our past shows right on our Blog Talk Radio homepage. You could just click on any of them. If you miss them, download them, free download. And it gives uh, valuable information for further exploration. So we hope you check it out. I hope everyone enjoyed the show tonight on the 10 different types of ghosts. I'd like to thank you for joining Joe and me tonight. You've been listening to the Carrie Ann and Joe Show, The Spirit Connection. It's hosted by Carrie Ann flanagan Broski and co-hosted by Joe Giaquinto. The show's producer is Joe Giaquinto, and the opening and closing theme music is produced by Corey Pulizzi. Thank you all for listening, and have a wonderful night. Thank you.